Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video, this will be the first time I'm actually planting up the new house here. So in the front garden, there is an existing bed that I'd like to plant up. There's a few spring bulbs coming up. Apart from that, there's not really much else in here. It's just all weeds. So I'm planning to clear this out. I'm not a big fan of these bulbs here. Um, they don't have the best show, but also they have a lot of leaves over, over winter and spring and they just kind of choke up the bed. I'd much rather have some large flowering crocus or maybe some snowdrops, things like that. So I will be putting bulbs in here at some point, but certainly these bulbs I'll probably be taking out, might be putting elsewhere. But this bed at the moment is very narrow. You can see it's kind of hard to see with all the weeds, but it's about, about that wide, so probably just about a foot. I'm going to probably double the width so I can get a lot more plants in. And because of the lockdown, I'm kind of restricted with what plants I can get. So. What I've done is I've grown all these from seed in, at my parents' house in a polytunnel, just for, using the seeds that I could get my hands on. So it's a limited selection, but uh, it should give a nice uh, colourful display later in the year. And I've gone for uh, the plants that I did have in stock, there's a lot of sunflowers, so I've got a good selection here. We've got four at the back here, that's one variety, they're quite large, multi stemmed branching yellow variety. Down here is a smaller multi stemmed branching variety uh, that grows a bit shorter. The back there we've got Russian Giant which is quite a, a well-known variety that grows really large and have really big flowers but it only has one flower, doesn't tend to branch. And around here this plant is um, it's a shoefly plant, the last one is Nicandra physoloides. This has got really nice blue flowers but it is quite invasive if you're in the tropical country so I wouldn't grow this in the tropics or Mediterranean climate but here in Scotland it struggles a little bit and it doesn't self-seed as well so it should make a nice ornamental as long as it's not too cold. It's the end of April now, so it's a bit touch and go, but these are getting so large I need to plant them out anyway, so I'm going to risk it. I've got some much smaller ones back in the polytunnel, and if so, if these don't survive, I can always plant out those smaller ones, and so these can be replaced at a later date. I've got quite a few of them, I'll plant them in. They can get quite large, but generally in Scotland they don't get too big, unless we have a nice warm summer. Down here, there's some other sunflowers. These are kind of medium height, five to six foot tall, and these are red. Uh, these, I think they're called... Uh, Ruby Sunset. I think these are multi-stemmed, but they're not as they don't branch as well as the other varieties I've got. So it'll be nice to see the a bit of red in there as well as the yellow of the sunflowers. And then the rest of the, the front of the bed is going to be planted up with smaller plants, and that'll be these here. And these are cornflowers. So I've managed to find a seed of mixed cornflowers. So these are going to be a real variety of colours. Cornflowers are normally coming blue. These also have purples and pinks as well in them. So we write a real mixture of colour. And the idea is the Ross and Giants are probably planting this wider section of the bed here and also at the other end. And then I'm going to have the, um, the other larger sunflowers dotted around in the bed. And then the front sections will be planted up with the cornflowers. And in between I'm going to find some space for the souffle plants as well. So when it comes to the soil, I need to cut out some of the turf. I need to also remove quite a few of the weeds. So there's quite a lot of work to do here. Uh, the weeds aren't too bad, they're all mainly annuals, a few grasses, but it's going to be too hard to take out. The toughest part will be removing the turf here. Uh, it's quite established turf, quite mature, so that would be quite hard to remove. So I need to remove about uh, probably another foot of turf or so, and just make a nice uh, semicircular bed coming around the outside. I'll probably leave the turf here in the middle for now. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this section. I might um, gravel that or extend the paving at some point. But for now I'm just going to leave that grass and then that side needs widened as well. It might be a little bit shady from this, but midday the sun will move around and it shouldn't be shady in that section. At some point I'm probably going to prune and drastically reduce the size of this shrub. Um, it's, a, it's a contorted hazel and it's really getting a bit too big for this position, so I'll be doing some pruning on that at some point, even though it's not quite the right time of year anymore, it should have been done in winter. So I'll get started now, um, taking out the grass and planting up the border. So that's me now clear the left hand side of the bed. It was a little bit tricky, tricky going, but it wasn't too bad. There was a, a few stones, um, but they weren't the major issue. The major issue was just that the grass was really well matted together. And when it when I pulled it up, it didn't come up in one lump, it just ripped because this grass is quite weak. There's a lot of weeds in there, a lot of moss. It's not a nicely, tightly knit uh, turf that it's got here. 
So the soil itself was much worse than I was expecting. It's actually a really dry, sandy soil. Now I knew there would be, it would be quite sandy because because most of the soil in this area is a sandy soil, but it's much sandier than I expected. I was suspecting it's a, a sandy soil with a little bit of loam, but it's hard to tell at the moment with it being so dry, the whole thing just seems to be dust. There doesn't seem to be any organic matter whatsoever in the soil. So I'm gonna to have to add a lot of compost to this to get it up to a fertile soil. And I'm gonna to have to also add a little bit of blood, fish and bone to feed the soil, because there's probably very little feed left in here. Looks like the soil was never really fed and it was never it had any, um, any compost added. There's just really no organic matter. The only things I found that was worth keeping were a few crocus bulbs that were down there. There's a nice little primrose here as well, so I'll keep that. But apart from that, the soil was, was pretty much just full of weeds. So having a closer look at the soil, it's surprisingly dry. We have had quite a dry month, but I wasn't expecting it to be as dry as this. As you can see, it really is just like dust. There's nothing holding it together at all, which means there's no organic matter and there's not much else apart from sand in here. It's a very loose soil because it's just like sand. It was compact when I first started digging. But as soon as I loosened it, it's just turned to this horrible dust consistency. And as you can see, it's very dry. I've even dug down deeper and it's still dried deeper down. So keeping this well water is going to be quite difficult because ha having a sandy soil means the water just goes straight through it. It doesn't hold much water. So as soon as there's a dry spell, the plants will start wilting almost straight away. Now I'll get the spade now and dig deeper. What I've noticed is there seems to be about a foot of topsoil. Although that topsoil is, is, is probably worse than some sub, subsoils that I've seen before. The subsoil though is a lot sandy and there's a lot of stones in it. It seems to be this is all uh, blown in from the sea. This is what most of the soil is in this area. It's very sandy, a lot of sand from the sea. And then you get all these round pebbles like you would on a beach. So these are some of the stones that have come up, very much like something from a beach. Could be from a river as well. I'm not so exact the source of this sand, but um, to me it does look a lot like it could be from the beach. There is a lot of glacial uh, deposits in this part of, the, of Scotland, but I think this is more likely from the sea, just because it's so sandy and it's, 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 not, it's not got that grittiness that you find in lots of glacial deposits. And there's also no silt really at all, which you often find if there's water runoff. So I'll dig a bit deeper now, see if what stones are like, and see what the subsoil is like. But I touched a bit earlier and it looked an awful lot like sand. So looking down now at the subsoil, it's pretty much looking the same as the topsoil, there's not much difference. Um, it's slightly damper so it looks a bit darker but I suspect if it was the same dampness it would look lighter because there should be less organic matter in there. Although the topsoil has so little organic matter it doesn't seem like there's much less to be honest in comparison because there's already none in the topsoil. Deeper down there's a lot of stones. I can't really get the spade in much deeper. All I'm getting is stones. I could probably get the fork and get slightly deeper. But it's not too bad. It's not the shallowest topsoil I've seen. It's about a foot. So it should be good once they enrich it. But it's, it's probably going to be like this in the whole garden. So it's a bit of a disappointment to see they have such terrible soil. But with a lot of work, I can hopefully deepen the soil by taking out a lot of the stones digging deeper and adding huge amounts of compost and organic matter. I think what I'll do once I've planted this bed up is I'll also mulch it with grass clippings or some kind of organic mulch just to help the worms. When I was digging this trench I didn't find a single insect or anything. The only thing I found was a little grub, um, a couple of wood lice as well and that grub was probably just eaten on the grass roots. There's no worms, um, there's very little else in here so it really needs a lot of, of work doing to the soil. It's basically dead. Um, because there's no organic matter, there's nothing for the animals to, to, to eat, there's in the, so the soil microorganisms. So it's almost like a dead soil, so I need to bring it back to life. Loads of organic matter, a lot of mulch, and I might even have to take in some worms from my parents' garden if there's no worms here already. There should be one or two somewhere in the garden, I haven't seen any. Um, hopefully I'll find some worms. If I don't find any worms, I'll have to bring in some from my parents' garden, and then they can start reproducing and multiplying. But at the moment the soil looks pretty horrendous. So I'll start digging over now and see how it looks with added compost. It should look a lot better, but um, it's, it, it's going to take a lot of work, I think, to get the soil to a good condition. So after working in all that compost, the soil is still pretty horrendous. Um, it's a lot better than it was. 
it's still a bit powdery but you can see it's not as powdery as before it's not blowing away in the wind the organic matter is holding together a little bit more but we're not going to get a nice crumb structure really until we get more organic matter in here and i also need the soil microbes to start doing their work and to produce a nice soil crumb so at the moment it's going to take a while to get the soil good i could put a lot more compost in um but with the lockdown it's kind of difficult to get compost so I can only put in two bags for now and um, hopefully I'll mulch with compost later on in the season if that's possible and um, we'll try and get some more in the soil that way. So all I need to do now is do the same on the other side which is a bit smaller so it shouldn't take as long and then get it all planted up. So now it's now the other side dug over as well and weeded. I've not widened that quite as much because the trees here and also as it goes round it kind of narrows where the concrete is anyway so I was a bit worried that it would look a bit strange. But I think in the future we'll widen it slightly just to make it in line with the other one around here. The soil here as well was actually slightly better. It's still really poor sandy soil, but around this corner here there was a tiny bit more loam in the soil, so it was holding together a little bit more. It wasn't like a complete powder. And also there's a lot of pigeons that uh, roost on my roof and the, all their droppings fall into this corner. So I think that's kind of enriched the soil slightly. I did manage to find two worms on this, in, this, uh, in this bed. But over on the bed on the other side, I didn't find a single worm. Another reason this side of the, was uh, much worse with the soil was there's a lot of roots from the Leilandi hedge here. So you can see, I had to cut through quite a lot of roots to dig through. So they're obviously, so they'll be leaching out a lot of the nutrients and a lot of the water from the soil. I tried to cut off as much as I could, but I don't want to take away too many because I don't want to damage the hedge and have the hedge die on me. So I'm now going to start planting up all the plants. I'm going to lay them all out first, get the arrangement correct, and then I'll put them in position. So that's the bed now is planted up as I would like it. So I need to, uh, to keep an eye on these plants. I'll definitely need a really good watering because the soil is so dry here. I'm going to give them a really good soak, mulch it when I can. And I've staked the four tallest sunflowers because they're a little bit leggy. The other ones I just have to see they might need stakes later on. And also these tall ones, they might need stronger bamboo canes later on. Depends how windy this site is. Not too sure, I've not been here that long but they might need some more substantial stakes in the future. It just depends. Some sunflowers are quite good at holding themselves up, but normally a stake does really benefit them. So the cornflowers, normally I wouldn't grow them in pots and plant them out. Normally I just sow them direct, but um, I, wasn't be able to, I wasn't able to get here and sow them at when, um, when I wanted to. So I just had to grow them on in pots in my parents' place. Now I'm hoping that they'll put their roots down and they're not gonna go straight into, into seed straight away. Hopefully they'll bulk up a little bit before they start flowering, but they might just start flowering straight away. And if they do, I'll then plant a few more in between just to bulk up their numbers a little bit. Because once these start to flower, uh, the plants won't get that much bigger. They'll just go to seed and they'll just go upright. But if I did head them, they should last most of the summer. So I might put in some other plants later on. Depends how these cornflowers grow on. We'll just have to see. And I'll give you guys an update in a few months' time. I'm hoping for some really good growth, especially from the sunflowers, because they should be really vigorous. They don't mind the cold temperatures. As long as there's not a frost, they should be fine. The uh, shoe flies, on the other hand, these ones down here, they don't like the cold temperatures, so there's a chance that they might not grow as well. But I'll just keep an eye on them. And the cornflowers, I'm not worried about the, the frost, the cold affecting them, but there could be some slug damage. Or oh, because they're such small plants with small root systems, they might dry out quite fast. So I'll just have to see how they do. But I think that's all for this update. So I'll give you guys an update in a few weeks time when this should hopefully be putting on a nice bit of growth.